Okay, hi everybody, thanks for coming. Um, as I said, I'm Paweł Weder and I'm uh, the Chief Product Officer at uh, Ganymate. Um, to keep it very, very simple, Ganymate is making social uh, casino games as well as um, uh, casual multiplayer games. We have around 50 products right now in our portfolio. And um, yeah, starting from, from poker, uh, over mahjong, and so on, pool. So we cover it all. All right, um, as you know, guys, this um, whole business is actually hit driven. What means uh, that average products just don't cut it anymore? And um, the thing is, if you start a product, you need, of course, the obvious stuff. You need a vision, an awesome idea, experience. You need uh, motivated, awesome uh, employees, funds, a great office with a great coffee machine. But the key to achieve actually a success is your user. So know him and find out who he is. So this is basically the agenda. We want to define the user. Um, acquiring him as a client, and finally retaining him and hopefully keeping as a customer. Um, everything I, I will talk about, I try to, to keep in focus with um, our brand and our casino. All right, to set the very basic KPIs, you need definitely the agenda, the age, the country, and game preferences of a user. Um, these are the basic metrics, and well, um, if you start defining them, you will find out very soon that when you uh, release your game and you check out the data, that not everything is true. For example, when you had um, our bingo, we had women from 30 to 45 in mind, but it turned out that as well, um, guys from 20 to around 35 years play bingo as well. What was a very surprise for us. Um, what's very important to basically before you start the game, uh, developing the game, is knowing the, at least assuming the um, family situation of the people. Um, think again, again about a woman between 35, 45. She will probably have children and she don't have time, let's say one half an hour to play a game. So design the game in mind with your audience. Ethnicity is a already defined group. This is something a lot of people forget. You can Google it, you can find people in groups that are uh, actually defined segments based on historical events, on, um, on experience, and even locations. And this is a ready group, use it. And religion, when you look at a uh, casino, that's very important, because many religions just forbid um, gambling. All right, and from the business perspective, um, wealth factor, biggest issue for us. Uh, we need to know how much a person can spend in the game. For argument saying 10 uh, bucks in America isn't that much to spend on a game. But for, again, argument saying uh, when you look at India, maybe 10 bucks are well weekly income of a teacher. So he will never ever spend this amount of money in your game. Available platforms, um, it's not only about PCs, Macs, uh, mobile. It's as well as um, looking on available internet connection. Um, in Europe, for example, you can get for 10, 20 bucks around 60 megabit and unlimited transfer. That's a lot. But when you look at Zambia, for 10 bucks, you will get maybe one gigabyte of transfer. So nobody will actually download your game because it's too expensive. And how social are they? When you design a game uh, with, again, a specific uh, group in mind, let's say New York group, um, they will probably tweet about the game, will maybe post from the game. Um, keep this in mind. And competitive uh, um, awareness. People know this kind of games they are searching for. When they pl play bingo, they will search for it. It's not a bad thing. It just means that the people probably need the game and want to play it. Again, collect data, uh, meet the expectations of your user, and really check the data as uh, often as you can because uh, you can assume what a user uh, will use uh, your game, but the final user uh, will be definitely different. All right, how to acquire a user? Um, cost per install, it worked a few years ago. Right now, at least for us, it's not working anymore. 
uh, because we had a lot of uh, really bad traffic when you look at, uh, for example, uh, Indonesia. We get, got this traffic, there were a lot of people playing, but nobody was paying. So we are going much more into cost per engagement. So we pay a much higher uh, cost for a user who comes into our game, stays for, let's say, 10 minutes or longer, and, um, as I said, he's much more costly, but, uh, yeah, keeping him, it's just the key. Cross-selling. Um, there are basically three parts of cross-selling. The first one is very obvious. You download an SDK, install it. But uh, remember one thing. When you have a golf simulation, never ever send people to an action game. It could work, but probably won't. When you have, again, a golf simulation, send it to a tennis play, uh, playing game. Uh, what we are using most is com uh, complementary product. Uh, I will give you an example on uh, consoles, not, not on uh, gambling uh, games. When you have on your PS3 an uh, awesome RPG, maybe uh, with, with some gr great mini games like lockpicking and so on, maybe you could take this lockpicking game, put it onto mobile for free, and this is great fan service, people love it, and the people who discover the game on mobile probably will pay for the PS3 game. And user acquisition games, if you have the money for it, uh, do it because creating, let's say, pool that sends over people to, to uh, poker and the people start paying in poker, it works much better than just buying the user. Okay, organic grow. Um, we have not much time, so I will just skip this. Um, you know about the CO and the ISO. It's very important. One thing that I would like to uh, point out are the screenshots. Even in casino games, people sometimes forget that, that, that users are buying the game or downloading the game with their eyes. They want to see what they get, and it needs, needs to look awesome, looks like you want to play it. And uh, never call your programmer and say, oh, just make five screenshots for, uh, for, for our uh, new game on iTunes. It will not work out. Okay, the press. It's a big issue when you look at uh, casino games because press is, of course, uh, one of the most uh, important uh, ASO and SEO um, features. But when you contact the press, it's uh, mostly like writing the mail, waiting, 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 and then boom, you get an email from your mom asking um, how you are doing. This is not working. Uh, we have very good relations with, with international press, but they don't like to right about standard games like poker, bingo. So we need really to move on and create games that they want to write out about. Virality still works. Um, this is one point. One year ago, a guy on GDC, I guess, uh, said that vir vir virality is dead. It's not, <laughs> not like this, because people sti still like to share. But they, they want to share something that is really worth it, or worth a click like scores, new stages, and so on. And uh, as long as you design the game with virality in mind, you will definitely have a big, much huger return of investment than by the buying user, because your user is generating mostly high-quality traffic. Um, even if they fail, let's say even in poker, you can share it, because it can be a great experience for some people to fail. Uh, this means when you hit a competition in a game that is really hard to beat because they are good, it means for many people, well, I play this game at this service because the people are there very good to, to play with. Um, but yeah, remember, don't spam the people. They don't like it. Okay, um, it's always uh, very important to care about the user because only high LTVs and daily active users as monthly active users guarantee you actually uh, a, very, um, a very high marketing um, budget. So how to keep the user? Make a fun call loop, that's very obvious, and well, retention. Um, Let's say your game is awesome. You like the, the users like to play it. They have fun with it. Uh, everything thing works. Make the menus, lobbies, and so on. Make them fun. Because the, the most important thing, at least for us, is right now engagement supports the whole game and not only the core loop experience. What basically means that um, even sharing 
the experience or clicking or on any button should be rewarding. When you look at Nintendo, for example, this is one, one thing I, I noticed lately. Uh, I played the last Zelda game and they had a menu that was so awesome. It wasn't engaging very much. It was there. It was awesome. It was very fun to, to click just on every button. Okay, and now imagine you have a game that isn't that immersive, like auto dobbing bingo. It works like slots. So you wait, you wait, wait. Maybe you push uh, the bingo button and you get some uh, feedback back. Uh, if you have such kind of game, you need to uh, expand your core loops, which means you should make an awesome chat, um, various social features, vote mechanics, mini games, and so on. Uh, for us, well, the, the chat is working perfectly because most of the people just come to chat with their friends. They are not friends in real life, they are not friends on Facebook, they are friends in the game, and they like it. Uh, so we are giving them value with sending you know, gifts, or right now we are developing a special social bar for the users that they feel that the game is much more alive than until now, which means when you have your users on your social bar, it can change. When my friend was playing bingo on a, in a different room, in a different uh, game, you get the feedback if he got, for example, a bingo. Uh, for the user, it means that looking at the right side of the game, he sees that they are playing, that they are socializing, uh, and everything feels alive. Um, focusing uh, on creating lifestyles, not only games. What means that a user should really, really, really uh, always think about your game. Um, not only when while playing the game. One thing, uh, thing we figured out lately um, was um, that we need a calendar in the game. The thing was, when you have uh, notifications, they are sometimes treated as spam. But when you have a calendar, that is very common knowledge. Everybody knows how to use a calendar. We learn it from, 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 uh, from the kindergarten, how to use it and what it means. So adding an event to a calendar in the game, adding a tournament, adding uh, a special, uh, special uh, event that would come will be not treated as spam because when you sync it with, with the calendar on your mobile or on your desktop PC, you will get the calendar message. So they really remember that something will happen in the game, they will probably come back to see it. Um, designing player economy. Um, again, when your user is a super fan, he likes your game, he plays it, he will probably want to earn some extra cash. So we give him the, the opportunity with creating clubs, tournaments, um, and so on. If he creates a tournament and he invests time in it, and he gives this tournament a nice name, an icon, and so on, uh, we reward him with uh, the rake back, at least a part of it. Uh, the thing is, he will advertise his own tournament to people outside the game, and they will probably come and play with him. And he says, come back with me uh, and play with me on my tournament. And uh, he will make um, free acquisition uh, actions for you. Well, creating to engage, people love new content, that's very common knowledge. Try to give as much away as you can, as often as you can. Um, DLCs works, still works and work very fine, not only in uh, hardcore games, but as well in casual games, even in poker or, or bingo, what's a very, uh, very, let's call it, old type of games. New content like backgrounds, uh, like quiz in, uh, in pool, like um, new, uh, new tiles in Mahjong always work. Multi-platform, um, again, multi-platform, best retention tool. Everybody knows it, make it multi-platform and use all the features that your uh, platform has to offer, like on mobile push notifications, on Facebook uh, posts, notifications, on Twitter tweets, and so on. And then, when you have your features ready, of course, HP test them, collect data, analyze, redesign. Uh, only optimized games really, really gives you, um, give you uh, back um, the user as a high, uh, as a user with a high lifetime value and high daily active as monthly active uh, activity. So, mm, the most important things uh, are, of course, identifying your user, 
knowing uh, who he is, where he is, uh, what he does, knowing your KPIs, acquiring your user, even if you can't just let someone acquire it for you, and creating tools for keeping the, the user. Thank you. Pavel, which ones are, do you think are the uh, more interesting um, untapped markets for social casino that people are not paying attention to? Um, for us, it's Brazil. Mm -hmm. Many people uh, don't even know that Brazil is uh, a huge um, social gambling community. Mm -hmm. And uh, I hope Asia. Asia, yeah. I Asia is still... Uh, um, nobody has cracked the code yet of... Uh, not, yet. not yet. We have uh, around 40% of our income from Asia, but uh, to be honest, it's Russia. <laughs> so it's, but a, still it's, it's, a, it's a different kind of Asia. Yeah, it's a different kind of Asia, but yeah, it's still uh, a lot of Asia there okay. besides Russia. Thanks, Pavel.